The purpose of this video tutorial is to describe and to illustrate the uh, different options available to apply changes to an existing set of tendons when the optimizer is used. So in this example we have uh, an existing uh, slab with tendons that were used or that were modeled using the floor wizard. These tendons could have been modeled by uh, manual input by using the partial optimization uh, or mapping functions that are in the in the in the program currently. Uh, so in this case, the prerequisite to using the optimizer is that the slab must be analyzed. In this case, the slab is analyzed, and we'll go ahead and select the option for optimizer. Once that's selected, you'll notice that the yellow handles indicate that the that the tendons can be optimized. So we are going to optimize um, this span here. We can optimize span by span using this tool and we'll go ahead we're going to zoom in and just select the tendons that we want to optimize. So we'll select 15 strands. These are the strands that are essentially a, por a part of this uh, span and the tributary for that span. So each of the tendons has a CGS of 1 inch. The um, force is set to 27 inches and we can see based on this uh, a diagram that the current force of 405 just simply doesn't meet the allowable stress requirements and that's shown under the current stress ratio at section C which is shown here by this blue line and uh, the mid span section B which is shown in the middle by the blue line these two are overstressed and this is um, represented by a ratio so anything greater than one is is over the allowable limit 6 square root of F prime C and in this case that limit is 379 um, PSI. So what the program optimization algorithm is doing is it's estimating that we need 893 kips to meet pre-compression and to meet allowable stress. Note that this does mean that the load balancing would be exceeded and the proposed or the estimated exceedance would be around 10 percent, 109.11 percent. So we're going to assume that we're going to live with that. We want to make changes to the uh, tendons and we want to go ahead and apply these changes. So when we go to apply, the program gives us different options to apply. Uh, the distribute option takes the number of tendons that are currently selected, in this case that's 15, the total required change is 488.2 kips of force. Uh, that results in um, 18 strands, 18.08 .08 strands. So the applied change per tendon is 1.21 additional strands that are required on top of the one that, that are already there in order to um, make this work. If we go ahead and apply this change, then what will happen is all of these tendons for every span along each of the tendon paths will change from 1 to 2.21. So that's option 1. This is um, this just distributes the total delta evenly across all selected tendons. The second option is single tendon. So we can take any of the selected 15 tendons using this option to select the tendon to modify and let's assume we want to modify tendon 8. In this sequence tendon 8 is here at the support and we're going to assume that that tendon has an effective force of 27 kips the total change is 488 kips the total strands necessary to meet that change again is 18.08 .08 kips or 18.08 .08 strands rather and so the program will simply add this amount of strands to that tendon line so that uh, allows us to represent the tendons as one single tendon replicated using um, tendon 8 as the template. The last option is to add tendons and in this option this allows us to really refine the design and, and easily add tendons to an existing set of tendons necessary to represent uh, the change. So the first option is to select the tendon to duplicate. If I select tendon 1, for example, the program is going to use that tendon's effective force shown here and also it's going to use that tendon's um, shape. Uh, so if this is a reverse parabola, we'll use reverse, so we'll use the, the, the shape of the span that is selected. 
for the duplication. We still have the same total force um, for the required change. That doesn't that doesn't change. It's 488.22 kips. The number of strands is still 18.08. If we represent that by just a lump sum value of strands, in this case we want to add tendons which are anchored behind this middle column line and they exit at the left edge of the slab. So we want to use the option for add tendons. We're going to create a number of tendons. The number of tendons can be anywhere between one and the number of selected tendons minus one. So in other words there are 14 gaps available for us to add add tendons. If we select the option for add tendons 14, the program then updates the required number um, the required change of force per tendon. It takes this value 488 divided by this number 14 to give 34.8 kips per additional um, strand and in this case the strand is 1.29 strands. That's what is required if we select uh, 14 add tendons. There's another option that says max strands per tendon. So if I select max strands per tendon the program allows us to set a number of tendons or bundled strands let's call it and if I select for example four we're going to have uh, a change per bundle of 97.6 3.62 strands it will always be less than this number CGS of one and the number of tendons that will then be five representing this max number of strands that we want to include so this will allow us then to add bundles of tendons those will be duplicated starting at tendon one. So between tendons one and two, we'll have one, two, three, four, five additional add tendons if we choose max strands. If I wanted to center the add tendons, I would have to start the duplication um, up in sequence, maybe at tendon five. This is tendon one, two, three, four, five. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five add tendons. So we'll go ahead and in this case, we're going to use um, add tendons between each gap. The tendon that we want to duplicate is still tendon one. Um, we're going to let's go back and change this to to one, and then we'll go back and update that to number of tendons, which is fourteen. We have the ability also to add full tendons, and that just simply means that the tendons are going to be cantilever, two spans, and cantilever, so they're going to replicate the same number of spans that each uh, existing tendon is uh, modeled for. Or we can do add tendons. We can um, create a partial tendon from section cut A, which is here. That means the tendon will be anchored back here behind this column, and it would exit at the right end. Or we can do opposite, where we anchor the tendon behind the middle column line and exit at the left end. And that's the that's the option we'll choose here. We want to rerun the analysis after we select the um, application of the change, and we'll go ahead and select apply. And you can see in our model now, the program has added the add tendons to the existing set of tendons. If I zoom in to these add tendons, we have one, 1 1.29, one, 1 1.29, and so on. The program has uh, rerun its analysis for this given model and then we could go back now and check the design uh, sections again for stresses having applied the changes estimated by the optimizer. You'll also note that when we do this when we apply the changes the current force is now the optimization value that we selected and now it's estimating the new force here so this becomes an iterative cycle um, or an iterative uh, process that we must follow and we would then apply changes again and again and we would then whittle down to the uh, force required to meet the allowable stresses for the given uh, design code or the condition we're trying to satisfy.